Hey guys, before this video starts, I just want to say I worked on this whole video on Twitch, so make sure you check out my Twitch. And I also want to mention that uh, in my Discord server, which is linked in the description, I'm posting new money makers that I either don't want to get saturated or I don't want to um, make a full video on because they're kind of short. So I have a channel just for that in my Discord. So if that's something you guys are interested in and you watch those kind of videos, uh, join my Discord and you can participate. We also have a contest running right now. So all, all, all kinds of great stuff's going on in there. So join that link in the description, follow me on Twitch and all that, and let's get into the video. Hey guys, what's up, Fur Daddy here. If you're anything like me and you have kind of been looking for something to do in Final Fantasy, uh, this video might be helpful for you. This is gonna be every single thing you can do during a week in Final Fantasy. So this is everything that resets on Tuesdays or another day of the week. And uh, you can just sit back, tune in, and I'll go over those with you now. Some of these make you some money, some of these save you some money, and all in all, these are all worth doing in my opinion. So let's get into the video. So I'm going to start this video off with a couple of combat related things that you could do every single week. Um, a lot of these are applicable right now, some of these aren't, but I'll go over them anyways. So the first one is going to be uh, completing your raid lockout. So obviously if you're already raiding you probably know about this already, but just to add it to the checklist, every week you can get a certain amount of gear. So if you're doing the normals you can get a certain amount of gear right now until it's unlocked in the next patch, and if you're doing savage it's the same sort of thing. So if you're trying to get your tombstone weapon you need your blades of asphodelos from uh, P4 normal. If you have a static together and you guys are raiding, you wanna make sure you get your raid gear every single week. I wanna particularly mention it's worth it if you don't feel like getting all the normal uh, raid gear because you're planning on doing Savage. It is still worth it to go ahead and do P4 every week to get your blades because you'll be able to uh, upgrade your tombstone weapon with those uh, blades. You'll be able to get a discal tombstone and that'll be a good way to upgrade your uh, your gear. So I highly recommend doing that, uh, just basically every week uh, doing at least P4 normal and then doing any of the savage raids that you have a group together for or can manage through Party Finder because that's gonna set you up in the future. So that sort of leads me to the second part of this, which is capping on your tombstones. So every week you're gonna wanna cap on your tombstones. Uh, you have a buffer, so if it's only 450 of the astronomy tombstones per week, you can still go and upgrade or, or just cap out even if you don't want to buy anything and get that up to 2,000. And then by the time you get to 2,000, if you have really have no more gear to buy, then you can not worry about it. But it's definitely worth it to cap on those and get those all the way up. So uh, yeah, cap on your tombstones. Uh, the, the limited ones per week, they're definitely worth it to do. Uh, you can always buy material with the one that has a 2,000 cap per week. You can spend those on uh, Alchemical Abrasive, Thavnarian Thread, uh, Aminodon Hide, just any of those uh, uncapped tombstone materials, you can go ahead and buy those, so it's worth it to make a little bit of money. The prices on those aren't terribly great right now, but it's a little bit of money, so if you're getting other tombstones in the process, it's worth it to make sure you don't over cap on those. So the final piece uh, here for the sort of combat tips is to cap on your alliance raids. So right now we don't have a capped alliance raid in Final Fantasy, but there will be when the new alliance raid comes out. So what you'll be able to do every week is not only get gear that's a high item level from those raids, but you'll also be able to get equipment or coins or whatever they're called this time. You'll be able to use to augment your uh, your tombstone gear. So that's going to be worth it to cap on every week. So, you know, in Shadowbringers, it would have been Puppet's Bunker, or Copied Factory or whatever, but uh, there isn't one yet. But just so this video is future proofed, you're going to want to do that uh, as well. So you can add that to your checklist uh, in addition. Okay, so the next tip that I have is custom deliveries. So this is useful if you're leveling your crafters or if you're, they're already leveled and you just want to get the scripts, which is a, uh, great for either leveling your alt crafters, getting materia, getting crafting materials, anything like that. I know the materia isn't going for a lot right now, but it's definitely worth it to stock up because you will have to eventually make new gear and we'll be using materia's 9 and 10s for the rest of the expansion. So. Uh, stock up on those, maybe stock up on other materials if you want to make your resplendent tools. But in any case, it's a free way to get like 3,500 of each script. So the way that you'll check on your custom deliveries, I've already made an entire video about how to unlock them and where to go for them. And that video is posted in the description. So it takes a long time to go over each one. 
but uh, just to go over how the general system works, if you press Control U, it pulls up your uh, your weekly tasks that you have, as well as your dailies and whatnot. Your your timers is what they're called, and so you're able to look at the uh, custom deliveries right there, and it'll show you the ones that you have unlocked. It won't show you ones you don't have unlocked, and you're able to click on each one, and you're able to see which one has a bonus. So for this week, L2 has a bonus and uh, I'm able to go into L2 and hand that in. So custom delivery is just consist of crafting a really simple item. The materials are usually sold by a merchant nearby. Again, I covered all this in my video, and then you just hand them in for the scripts. Make sure you don't overcap. You, there's also a script exchange nearby, so that makes it really helpful. So yeah, make sure you're doing your custom deliveries every week. The rewards are good, the quest lines are good. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, you get a mount out of it with L2, so definitely do these if you haven't been doing them already. And if you're still leveling your crafters passively, this is a great way to do that as well. Okay, so the next one on this list is just a pretty good storyline to go through. You get some unlocks from it. So it's something if you haven't finished, you definitely should. They might be doing another one of these in Endwalker, hopefully with Garlemald. But the next thing that is a weekly uh, donation is the, um, the Doman Restoration. So this will see you through restoring Doma from Stormblood uh, through various stages and unlocking various things. It's cool. You get to see the city sort of like rebuild. But the best part about it, if you're trying to make money, is that they actually pay you double vendor price uh, for any materials that you put in their donation basket. So this is great if you have like clear demi materia or anything like that that you would usually just sell to a vendor. You're able to get like double the price. So if you see something that usually sells for 119 gil will give you this gratuity on top of it. So this is a great way to get, once you're finished, 40,000 gil or an extra 20,000 gil. And uh, if you haven't finished it, it's just a great little storyline to go through. So I suggest doing that as well. There is a rather convoluted process to unlocking this. So I've linked in the description uh, the Domen's Adventurers Guild quest line from the console games wiki. You're going to want to do all three of those. And I've also linked uh, the Precious Reclamation quest. I've just linked all the quests involved with that in the description. So make sure you go check that out as well. Um, yeah, so moving on. So next up, I just want to briefly mention the challenge log. Uh, this is another thing that resets every week. You're able to pull it up just by clicking the challenge log. I'm just going to go over it because even though it doesn't seem super useful, there's some great things about it. So there are some things like feeling lucky, dungeon master, exercising the right. There's a few uh, things like that that give you a huge amount of experience. So if you're leveling your alt jobs, it's worth it to go run those dungeons, do that content just to get those done every week, even if you don't feel like doing the whole thing. So like. For example, uh, let's say you don't want to run roulettes all week. You could just run three roulettes once a week, and uh, yeah, you can you can get your feeling lucky or your dungeon master or whatever. Uh, in addition to that, the other one that I recommend doing is the Eureka one for a similar reason. Let's say you don't really feel like doing Eureka, you can just unlock Eureka, do Eureka in your challenge log once a week, and passively get levels up through that. In addition to that. Um, you're able to get MGP from the ones from the gold saucer and just like about 50 or 60k gil from just going through all the random uh, all the random like challenges that, that are there so it's definitely worth it to do um, moving on okay so these next two are one in the same and those are the wondrous tales and faux hollows you unlock both of these by completing blue quests in Idleshire. Uh, there's going to be keeping up with the Aliapos as well as um, the Painfully Ishgardian Man uh, if you already have access to the Wondrous Tales but you haven't done that quest. So both of those are in Idleshire. They're blue quests you can talk to and they work in very similar ways. So Wondrous Tales is sort of a weekly gambling mini game you can do where it'll set you up to do eight random trials, dungeons, raids, stuff like that. Um, and there's a few things that you should know about how it works. So the first thing is you can actually do all that content unsynced. So let's say you've built up a bunch of second chance points from doing roulettes or helping people clear. If you've ever done a dungeon and it says so someone is new to this, you'll get a second chance point. That's what these are for. So if you do these, uh, you are able to get all these prizes. If you actually look at your wondrous tale, uh, there is a reward for nine seals which is either uh, platinum and a whole bunch of experience it's like half a level but if you get one two or three lines on the board 
which are quite rare. You get uh, these bronze, silver, and gold certificates of commendation, as well as MGP and tombstones. So this is a great idea to do. It's good for XP and everything like that. I just suggest taking out the easy ones or just picking it up at the beginning of the week and then doing them throughout the week. Faux Hollows is pretty similar. It's a similar mini game. I can't show you right now because the way that Faux Hollows works is you get it by clearing the Unreal level. So it was Leviathan before and they just announced in the live letter it's going to be Ultima's Bane. So basically what the Unreal Trials are, they're like super hard versions of the original Extreme Trials. They're exactly the same mechanically. But the boss, the scaling, and all your abilities are all scaled up to level 90 or level 80 in Shadowbringers or whatever. And those are awesome and definitely worth doing. You can get some of the most expensive mounts in the game. You can get this mount here from doing it. Uh, this goofy little guy. And this, this mount goes for like 17 mil right now. So when the Unreal Trials are out, you definitely want to make sure if you have a group or people to do it with, you're doing those Unreals once a week as well because it's just free money. So definitely do both of these once a week. And moving on. So these next two are related to the Golden Saucer, and that would be the Jumbo Cackbot and the Fashion Report. So starting off with the Jumbo Cackbot, you're just going to want to head up here, and every week you can buy three Jumbo Cackbot tickets from the Jumbo Cackbot Broker. That allows you to get into the running to win. You probably won't win. God knows I've never won. If you win, it's a million MGP, which is crazy. But a few things you should know about the Jumbo Cackbot. The first one is that the consolation prizes that you get for getting one, two, three, or four work backwards. So if your number is one, two, three, four, uh, a number, if they drew one, two, three, one, you wouldn't get any consolation prize. But if they drew two, two, three, four, you would get three numbers. If they drew like two, one, three, four, you'd get two numbers, etc. So if you're trying to like min max, it's probably a good idea to have. Uh, at least the last digit numbers be different. I just click randomize and if it's the same last digit, I don't usually do it. It doesn't really matter, but yeah. Once they do the drawings, you're on Saturdays, you are able to go and talk to the Jumbo Cackbot cashier person to the side and they give you your reward. So this is definitely worth doing every week. You can spend MGP on tons of good stuff, triple triad cards to get your mount. You can get other mounts with it. Just It's good to build this up passively. And a good way to get another huge amount per week guaranteed is by doing the fashion report, which I'll talk about now. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the fashion report. So for anybody who doesn't know, the fashion report is a weekly mini game in the Golden Saucer where this guy named Masked Rose gives you hints about what sort of gear you're supposed to wear. We don't really have to worry about any of that because this awesome person named Kayoko Star on Twitter, I've posted their Twitter in the description, posts every single week. I just follow them on Twitter. I suggest you do the same. They post on every single week these awesome charts that just show you like exactly what you need and they also show you the easiest way to get 80 points. You only need 80 points for the full reward of 60,000 MGP, but if you see a particularly easy week, you can always go for the 100 points to get the fashion leader title. So this is worth doing every week. The reason why is because you never know when they're going to add new items to the Golden Saucer. And if you have a huge stockpile of MGP, you're going to get to be the person that as soon as they drop like the new 3 million MGP mount, you can just go in and you can get the new mount. So I think that's pretty exciting. And obviously you can get stuff like the Sabotender. This is a passive way to do this. So the thing is with all these methods, you know, you do these when you have a bit of lull in your motivation in the game. And when you get back into it, you get a kickstart by being able to get a Fenrir or a Sabotender or a Cloud Strife Triple Triad card. Just little things to keep you going. Okay, moving on. So the next thing I want to talk about are weekly hunts. Uh, weekly hunts are unlocked during the process of unlocking hunt trains. I have a link in the description to where I talk about hunt trains. I talk about them in so many different videos, so I'm not going to go over it here. But if you have the weekly hunts unlocked, uh, you're able to get three different weekly hunts that each give you 100 seals, which translates to 20 uh, Aetherite tickets, which is really good and totally worth it. So you can see me doing them on the screen right now here. And so basically you can just go, the first spot is in your uh, grand company's like main base. So mine's in Gridania. The second spot is uh, here in Foundation. And the third spot is either in Rogger's Reach or Kagane. It's the same one. I think the Kagane one's a little easier to get to. So I use that one. And they basically just give you like an enemy that you're supposed to kill. 
you go to the location, kill the enemy, and you get the seals. I think these are definitely worth it. Uh, you don't need to do the daily ones, but the weekly ones are totally worth it uh, because they give you the materials for uh, for getting Aetherite tickets. Now, if you want, you can also do the one in Charlian to get the sacks of nuts, but I find sacks of nuts are pretty easy to come by. Uh, <laughs> so, unless if you're really hurting, unless if your nuts sack is really hurting, you can uh, <laughs> you can just do these ones here. So for the last one here, I wanted to put something a little weird, and I know my friend in particular, Grimnir, wouldn't let me live it down if I didn't put this in the video. So this is going to be the Mass Carnival. If you have your Blue Mage leveled up, I highly suggest you guys do the Mass Carnival every week. You get the first time seal clear for doing it, but also if you go back, every week there's special challenges that have extra uh, little requirements. So I've provided a link in the description to where you can find some of these uh, some of these. Um, challenges if you haven't done them for the first time to get up to there and that is a guide to just go through the whole blue mage stuff and as for the challenges you're able to quickly look up each time it's a different week so I can't go over every single one of them but you're able to look up the, res the restrictions so for this week I could only use physical attacks uh, I couldn't heal and yeah so I I was forced to use those restrictions, but I was able to get 300 seals out of it, which is totally worth it. So I don't necessarily do like every single one of these every week. I just go and I check to see if there's one that is like worth it for me to do. And I think it's some fun puzzle solving and it's a little bit of a breakup to like the more grindy aspects of the weekly stuff. So that's a really good way to get like just like a million of the uh, tickets. So I think that's definitely worth it to do. You also get tombstones from it. So yeah, uh, Mass Carnival, do it. It's here in Ulda, and I highly recommend that. So that's all the weekly content uh, there is every week in Final Fantasy. Again, you can press Control U and see a lot of this stuff uh, to pull it up. So you can see the Dome and Enclave, the custom deliveries and all that, and it shows you exactly how long you have remaining. So uh, with that in mind, let's get to the outro of the video. Okay, so this is the outro of the video. Uh, I was really excited to work on this. The people in my Discord uh, really wanted this as well. So I'm hoping the video does pretty well. If it does, uh, if you guys want to see a version for dailies, let me know and I'll do that next. So if you guys want to see a version of this just for like the stuff you can do every day, I'll totally do it. This is just another reminder. Uh, I made this whole video in Twitch. So shout out to everybody in my Twitch chat who is there. And it's a lot of fun to work on videos there because I get to talk to you guys during it. So make sure you follow me. And yeah, uh, as always, thanks for all the support on my videos, guys, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.